Actually, the computer can explain your whole life. It has a memory, it has an operation, it has a program in it. How do you want to do your computer? Have you been accumulating a lot of bucks in it? You need to purify it, otherwise you'll get into trouble. So what computer you have, and what files you put in your computer? Greediness, hatred, jealousy, harmfulness, depression, Phobia, anxiety, killing, lying. I don't know, many, many of these files. But you're also free to build in good files. Files of compassion, kindness, uh, responsibility, intelligence, diligence. Why don't we all start to shovel our files and why don't you all look at the file cabinet, pull it out and reshovel it, reshovel it and prioritize it and clean up the old stuff. Can I translate in English when I talk in Chinese? Oh yes, I can, but maybe I have to ask my translator in here. <laughs> yes, can you do that? Yes. Yeah, I can, I can translate it. I've been talking about sound. A question is asked about sound. How can we chant? Sound itself has energy. Sound is a manifestation of energy. Not only sound, not only is sound an energy, even a thought is an energy. A sound is already a manifested energy. Given that, we understand that, how do we fit into our daily world? Oh yeah, scientifically, sound is an energy. But how do we fit into our daily world? How do we learn from it? What kind of, what kind of lesson we learn? What does it imply? The more intelligent guy would go one step forward to say, this is what is given. I want to know how do I learn from this given fact? And let's fit into what we're doing today. Let's fit into chanting, right? Let's fit into what we're doing today. Chanting itself, chanting a mantra, for example, Om Mani Bhami Hung Namadasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Samya Sambuddhasa Chanting itself conveys energy. Why the sound and energy? Let's talk about sound. A sound is an energy of frequency. That's low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency. The very high frequency even the human ears cannot comprehend. So our frequency of sound, our sound receptability is limited. We're not even better than the dog's ears. A dog can listen frequency five miles away, the siren goes, the ambulance sirens go, the dog already bark and hear. But our human ears, we don't know until the ambulance vehicle is coming by, then we can actually hear the siren of the vehicle. So our, our, our ears is very limited in our ability to comprehend. So that also teaches us that whatever we don't listen to, we don't have any reception of it, it does not mean that that doesn't exist. And it's been proven that chanting gave out a lot of frequencies. Your, your tongue gave out the frequencies. And somehow the arrangement of the mantra words put together is like what, not a, it's not a, not a magic, uh, you know, what do you call that? What do you call that? Uh, would you remember what magic what? what magic, magic spell? Yeah, something like that. It gives out a certain frequency that would affect the inner feeling of your mind. It gives you a lot of reflection on your mind. Just like when 
when you use machine to focus your sound, it becomes an ultrasound. An ultrasound nowadays is used in, in, in medicine to break bladder stones. They don't even need to operate on you. They just use a, f a focus of sound frequency to break into your body without breaking your skin to break that bladder stone. Sometimes they, they, they use sound to, to, to heal, to, 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 to cure, and they call it, uh, I think they call it vibrational medicine. It, it's a field that is developed so fast, so famous, so attracting a lot of other individuals to come to get to, to research in it. It's called vibrational medicine, medicine, and that's actually sound therapy. So when you are chanting, it's, it's giving yourself a lot of remedial actions in soothing whatever pain that you have in your subconsciousness. So sound, so when you are chanting, when you're saying prayers, and every sound has three fruit moral nature in it. It's either good, if we can summarize it, good, bad, or neutral. If you're always saying the good thing, if every, every speech you say, if every speech is compassionate, is considerate, is polite, is true, you're giving out good energy. If every speech is flattery, cursing, yelling, double-telling, tattle-telling, oh, you name it. They're, they're going to be immoral, and they give out immoral effects. So which one do you prefer? You want to give out good frequency or bad frequencies? So that's what I've been talking about. Chanting, chanting, and, and good sound. Say, sometimes people say, I want to give. You don't have to give money. Your charitable, charitable attitude is not just expressed in, in terms of money, monetary terms. You can express your charity in terms of what? A good word of praise, a good word of praise, a good word of consolation, a good word of consideration, even a thank you, a good morning, care, a word of care, carefulness, a, a, a word of respect that gives out good energy. Or even action, a smile. You can wear a good smile. So I always like people who, who always want to have a smiling face in front of people. Some people are so confused that they always look very stern. They don't care to give out any good smile. And some people, they always give a good smile. It's giving. A good smile is just not smiling on yourself. It's a good giving, a good smile in the morning, a good morning, you know, a word of praise. All that counts. Every thought is energy. So what's your thought? Yeah. Toxic, yeah. Um, but you still want to just use the, the compassion. Good files. Yeah. How do you, how does someone work with Yeah, I'd like you to pull out another file from your archive. That's the file of <laughs> forgiveness. File of forgiveness is a very powerful file. You can forgive all this abusive behavior that people have been imposed on you. You forgive. Because what happened applied to you, the abusive action has been done already. You won't allow it to be done again. And the person who did that abusive attitude is probably ignorant at that time, given certain situations. If he was in a situation where he had no education, nobody told him that you know, doing that kind of thing is bad, or he's intoxicated, or he himself is all confused. He probably did that because he's in confusion, in intoxication. He himself is it's terrible, miserable. Now, what happened at that time that been abusive to you, for example, will not come back again. I'm not going to, to get that historic abuse, abusive behavior, put it on my present table, and think about it, and ponder on it, and agonize on it. I'm only stupid if I do that. I'm stupid if I bring out a bad file experiences and put it in there, and refer back to it and get crying, revenge, and all that, would it help? It won't help, because that's been done already. It's not gonna be repeated. So what you do is don't pull out the file of hatred. Pull out the file of forgiveness and say, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna forgive Mr. A who did this. And uh, I, I wish him the best. Not just forgive him, 
I wish him the best because during that situation he probably was all confused himself. And because of this confusion, he did that. But I'm going to forgive it. So you register in your file and you put it back there. And then you pull out your file of compassion. I'm going to be compassionate to him even. Pull out the file of forgiveness. And it will work. Yeah. All right? Okay. Yes? If that abusive person is, you know, something like enjoying his action, that is he still doing the same, the same thing on you? If he's repeating to the same thing on you, you should be more intelligent to, to get away from it, right? You don't let him, him to do, do that abusive behavior on you. You try to avoid it, all right? That's one thing, that's one thing. Another is, um, you know why he has, he has been abusive to you repeatedly? There must be a reason, right? Let me explain it to you first, okay? And maybe you did the same thing to him in your previous life, even more serious. You beat him up all the time. You try to help him. You try to help him out. And also, uh, there's so many, so many probabilities. The, the, one of the probabilities is you've been that bad to him. And, it, and he's coming to get even with you. And uh, because you, you treat him poorly in your previous life. And, and there was one case where uh, it's written in history that, that in ancient China, two, three hundred years ago, even earlier, they could, any, any um, uh, leader of a family, the head of the family, can sell their children and even sometimes their wives. And if, they are, if, if the life is miserable for them, because they, 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 not, not just one kid, they may have five or six kids. And they may just sell off one kid, right? So there was a case that that man sell off his kid, you know, because uh, he, he, he didn't, it didn't work out. He was rich before and then he became poor and he, sell off his, his, he sold his last kid. And then his kid was sold to a, to, to a place where it was miserable. He was, that, that kid was mistreated. And in the process of being mistreated, he hated his father. When he was sold, he was six, seven years old. He still remembered his father. Why did he sell me and not my brother? Why was he unfair to me? I hated him. I hated him. I hated him. So next, next life, he became his, became his, he, be, he turned into a woman, became his wife. And he, his wife really mistreated him, agonized him, because he treated, he saw him off in his previous life. So we don't know about previous life experiences. All that worked out because of reason. There's, there's no such thing as no reason for it. If I were you, I would, be, I, I would not be clever if I stayed and let him beat me up. Would, I, would you let him beat you up? You know, unless, unless you have to depend on him financially. If I leave, probably I would be sleeping on the street. And for the sake of having something to eat, a house to live, then I would just tolerate for the time being. But, um, I, and, and I, I must have that frame of mind that maybe I have done the same thing to him before and he has just come back to get even with me. Yeah, yeah, so intricate. Causes and, causes and effects are so intricate, so subtle, so like a, uh, like, like a what? Like a, I always compare it to a kadioscope. Is it a kadioscope? You know, it's always, when you, uh, what do you call huh? Huh? Could it, huh? Could that, yeah, kaleidoscope. You know, when you shake it, it changes. Shake it, it changes. It becomes so confusing that you don't know where to start the the cause, the causality. Kaleidoscope. So I always have difficulty in pronouncing that. Yeah, because it's it's all changing. When have you seen that before? You it shakes, it changes, shakes, it changes. You cannot identify which which it's it, it's the first one. 